Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of Cuts International, I uh, invite you all to today's webinar. This has been organized by Cuts International and Oxfam Novib under the program Transboundary Rivers of South Asia. Now, this program is being implemented in the Transboundary Rivers of South Asia uh, with the support of uh, Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency. And the aim is to uh, reduce poverty of the riverine communities and help the mar marginalized people. Now, in today's session, we will be focusing on the just one aspect, one ecosystem services, which you know um, uh, the transboundary rivers provide to support uh, about six, around 650 million people in the Ganges Brahmaputra Meghna Basin, which is inland navigation. Now, rivers are known to support the lives, livelihood of the riverine communities. Uh, they support the agriculture, fisheries, tourism, and uh, uh, they provide energy and n number of services. And navigation is one of them, and which has been benefiting the nations and communities since long. Now, the, these rivers, like uh, the countries of India and Bangladesh, they share 54 transboundary rivers, and um, a few of them have been declared as protocol routes between the countries, and it has been used for trade and transit for, of good and uh, you know, yeah, tourism services. Now, in today's discussion, we will be uh, having uh, speakers from different fronts who will discuss about the potential of these waterways to bring in economic benefits to the communities who are dependent on these rivers, say the, the farmers, the, the boatmen, the local producers, the local traders, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll, we are aiming to come up with messages that would actually uh, lead to policy action to enhance collaboration in this aspect and also to ensure better participation of communities. So we have uh, four panelists today and right now uh, two of them have joined and uh, for the benefit of time, we'll start our session with Ms. Um, Archana Chatterjee, who is uh, a program manager, International Union of Conservation of Nature, India. Uh, I request Archana Ji to share her thoughts on uh, this topic, on how communities can gain benefit from transboundary inland navigation. Over to you, Archana. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Veena. And uh, thanks for uh, inviting IUCN to be uh, you know, part of this important discussion at the Stockholm Water Symposium. Um, I think IUCN has been working, as many of you may be knowing, uh, on water governance, hydro diplomacy, um, track three approaches to in more inclusive water governance for a very long time. <clears throat> and I think uh, we all know that a conventional framing of a transboundary water governance is only state to state matter and they want to keep it that way. And in this process, what happens is it, it marginalizes the voices of the people, of the people who are really dependent on those resources. And it underplays the, their own knowledge of their own resources. And therefore, we really lose out on a very big opportunity. Uh, we in our uh, in our work with transboundary water governance uh, across the world, IUCN has is working in a lot of transboundary basins. Uh, GBM is also one of them, and uh, we have been emphasizing on a lot of uh, track three approaches in this, especially GBM region, because as we all know, in the South Asian context. Uh, more of bilateral dialogues are, you know, in terms of whenever it comes to uh, shared rivers, transboundary rivers, it's always bilateral issues. They don't want to consider a basin approach. So therefore, I think while it's very difficult to bring maybe countries, uh, governments together in a basin context, it's much easier for track three approaches uh, which involves people, which involves communities, especially women, youth, um, NGOs, and even academic organizations 
um, to foster dialogues among them, which can then benefit, uh, we, we hope it can benefit the track one and two level dialogues, which are mostly between government to government and government agencies to government agencies. Now, why are these track three voices as agents of change very important? One, their deep practical experience and innovation in use and sharing of the resource. That's very critical to harness that because they are interacting with this resource every day, every moment. Their own traditional knowledge, their own socio-cultural knowledge about the resources is very, very important to be included. Their ability to disseminate and contribute their knowledge towards cooperative solutions framing um, is something that we should always try to harness uh, in a transparency context. And their dependence on the resources for their livelihoods. So therefore they are directly dependent on these uh, resources and therefore uh, they are really motivated and it, this propels them to play a meaningful role, uh, not as a roadblock role or something um, in cooperative planning and decision making to drive change. So that is why I think the inclusion of uh, these voices uh, needs to be recognized at every level uh, in water governance issues. So if we don't recognize the role of these communities, which they can play as users and sharers of the resource, uh, in our case, the transboundary uh, water ecosystems, this feeds a vicious circle leading to lost economic opportunities for the communities themselves and further perpetuating their non-recognition in uh, the uh, water governance issues. And sort of taking hold of governance of these resources um, through their own mechanisms. Uh, one of the examples I would like to give the IUCN was working uh, on a uh, India-Bangladesh project, Ecosystems for Life, in which we were looking at several uh, issues from the lens of shared ecosystems and not exactly uh, the way governments look at it in terms of how many uh, cumics of water can be shared by which country. So we were looking at, at it from a more people's perspective, community to community perspective. And one of the issues that we looked at was, which, um, which some people may say is not exactly transboundary, but it is, uh, is the floodplain wetlands. Now wetlands are, um, I mean, on the India side, as well as on the Bangladesh side, connected by transboundary rivers. They are the life, lifeline of several communities. So one of the, one of the uh, case studies that we did was on the, the poor wheel and the, um, this uh, Maguri Motapong wheel in Assam and Choran wheel in Bangladesh, which, is, uh, which are fed by a transboundary river, Brahmaputra. Now, seemingly the two wetlands are in two different countries. Uh, the set of communities that depend on them are located in different geography, I mean, in different countries, but what binds them together is this river. And if, if we see the, the, the water governance issues, if they are looking at this river in isolation, it is really excluding the communities that are dependent on these beans, on these wetlands also. And we really found many issues that many developmental works that are either done on the river or on the wetlands, they really impact the communities, their resilience. Um, as we all know, the flooding in Assam is a recurrent phenomenon. And these wetlands provide the natural infrastructure to control floods. But this uh, capacity was getting compromised because of uh, the various uh, developmental works which hamper the ecosystem service that these wetlands provide for the people. And same for fisheries. So there were many, many such issues we, uh, we worked on. Um, one of them was also inland navigation, where we looked at how the, um, the local communities which, which are living in Bangladesh and in India and dependent on these rivers, how they can come together uh, to 
to benefit from the ecosystem services that ever provides in terms of goods and services which they can trade with the other country which can you know they can build their livelihoods on and i think cuts international has also been working on these issues and on many of the studies we collaborated with them um with them to really look at one of the case studies i would like to again highlight as an example that we did on uh, looking at inland navigation and fisheries uh, fisheries in uh, especially in a transboundary context and we looked at the site in at dhubri in assam and we found that while the inland navigation which is uh, which is sort of managed by the inland waterways authority of india um, is doing their bundling is doing their uh, the movement for the you know the the maintaining the corridors for the movement of the vessels but the fisheries where are the fisheries in that stretch um where where are the you know uh, the nurseries for those fisheries uh, they they had no idea there was no mapping co mapping of so fisheries department is working on its own and the inland navigation department is working on its own whereas the two should come together map the routes in a way that these inland navigation routes do not hamper the fisheries which on which the local communities depend so these are some of the um, just few examples we have several examples uh, which we can quote where i think the inclusion of the community voices um their concerns their knowledge would i think really add on um to you know not only benefit them but also i think in a political context in a socio economic context benefit at the national level too um recently i seen organized this uh, um, meghna knowledge forum Uh, Meghna is the river out of the GPM on which IUCN is focusing, and I think Cuts is also focusing a lot of work uh, on that river. And we had a special session on uh, inland navigation there also, and inclusive water governance. Um, we we really talked about how uh, the communities can benefit inland. I think many of the points will come up through various other speakers who are working in this field of. in the navigation uh, but i think one of the points that uh, that was very interesting for me was the idea of river hearts um so basically we already have this context uh, concept of border hearts which are approved by our uh, respective ministries of external affairs and other ministries and but these border hearts are on the land so why not we have these river hearts where the river communities can get together and exchange uh, you know uh, their products sell them and earn their livelihoods so that was uh, one of the things i really that point uh, was really well taken and i hope cuts takes it forward because cuts was uh, the uh, they were managing that particular session too um some of the other key points that came out of our make the knowledge forum and i will stop at that one is that inclusion increases the legitimacy of the decisions that our government take so therefore it is very very important that these track 3 voices uh, really feed into the track 1 and 2 dialogues that the governments have government to government it also increases the transparency and accountability um, there are many examples where decisions have been taken koshi koshi is one example Uh, where you know decisions have been taken which have uh, disregarded the community concerns on both sides in india and nepal and have proved to be uh, sometimes a very big disaster on both sides it uh, inclusive water governance also provides opportunities for science informed traditional knowledge enriched decision making so therefore i think inclusion of uh, the community voices is really really key to good decision making for uh, the governments as well as other institutions in the world in such dialogues and most of all it supports people and planet so therefore i think uh, whatever recommendations come out of this uh, particular session really go a long way in i think
in motivating uh, the agencies involved, the government agencies involved to really uh, start this process. It's not too late. It's never too late to start. Thank you, Veena. I'll stop there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Archana, for highlighting uh, you know, some of the key points, the relevance of track three dialogue. Uh, I remember even uh, in our visioning exercise for the, the GBM uh, CSO network, we started with you know, uh, talking about the shared destiny, the, the, the heritage, uh, the common heritage and the common ecosystem. And um, uh, you also pointed out about uh, you know, uh, underplaying the voices of communities uh, when in top driven approaches where you know, uh, in bilateral dialogues, with the top officials, top diplomats actually discuss about uh, the local level issues and the voices are often underplayed and hence the importance of track three dialogue. Um, and also the significance of wetlands and um, you know, uh, uh, in, an integrated approach of uh, fisheries and of managing fisheries and uh, inland navigation, which came out from our discussions in, in Dubri. Uh, I remember that. Um, and also the, uh, the relevance of river hearts, which is you know, something uh, on conceiving, we, uh, we can see that it would be uh, another opportunity for people to people connectivity, for cultural integration and economic integration. And that is something we can actually uh, take up for our future interventions. Thank you for your valuable thoughts. Um, let me next come to our uh, next speaker, uh, Ms. Shanta Soili Moina. She's Project Officer, Center for National Resource Studies, Bangladesh. Um, um, so CNRS is also a TROSA partner and um, she mostly works on wetland conservation, nature-based solutions, etc. Uh, over to you, Shanta. You can share the experiences from Bangladesh on um, you know, sustainable navigation and other different issues. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Vinadi. Thank you so much. And uh, I will be talking from the inclusion perspective. And as you know that the transboundary rivers of South Asia, I mean, Prosa project is a water governance project. And we here are trying to reduce the poverty and the marginalization among the vulnerable river basin communities to increase access and control over river and water resources on which their livelihoods depend. So actually, uh, inland water transport is a place for collaboration because before 1965, there was groups of transportation through transboundary rivers that were open before 1965. So riverways uh, was the main pathway for transporting uh, at the beginning, but uh, now it is closed. So the main benefit is of, of using river for transportation is uh, high, it is highly cost effective. I mean, uh, the transportation of product would be much lesser than the other media of transportation. So thus the final price of the product become lower and so the price of uh, price would be more affordable to the buyers and sellers can benefit more. So the first concern of us is that the river should be navigable for transboundary transportation. So the unused riverways demand of grazing and also our rivers uh, have high amount of sedimentation transfer every year, which makes the dressing and the maintaining of the riverways to be a continuous process. It's a never ending job. So the country has to invest here. So, so the question arises here is the amount of the country investing and the amount of amount that will be saved to the through the river transportation. Is the calculation is showing any profit? Right, I mean, in micro level, the money expenditure and the money saved should be equitable to the profit, otherwise it will not sustain. So now, if we think that we are reducing the cost of transportation uh, regarding the product and all of, all of these things, in the end, customers will be benefited, benefited ultimately. But here we have to consider that what is the product? If we focus on such type of product that is benefiting for a big businessmen, uh, then it will be actually investing for the big businessmen. Uh, for example, the fly ash transportation, uh, the, this is not a product for everyone's use, not for the grassroots people, right? Uh, this is used in bulk amount for infrastructure. So ultimately the investment, investment will be for the people who are already privileged. Also the product increases the carbon consumption 
so the environmental concern is also to be accounted so talking about the environment uh, now let's think about the side effects so the dredging i'm talking about this will have an impact on river topography river water quality overall the river ecosystem that will result into the into having an effect on fisheries as well as the people dependent on the, the fisheries so where we stand is that we want to traditional boats to be involved in the water transportation not only the big ships that need some dredging in the river this way the dredging uh, if we introduce the traditional boats again uh, so the dredging will be the minimum and also the community can access the transboundary navigation more easily and more efficiently secondly the promo to promote transboundary water transport for something which will not hamper the river ecosystem for example we can promote tourism uh, we can promote inter country tourism also promote such such type of products in, in trade to transboundary riverway which will benefit the community one of the tourism partner that is gono unnan kendro i mean guk they have some works on uh, on this issue which type of product can be promoted from bangladesh to trade in neighboring country we found that there are peanuts and or chestnuts uh, and dairy products like cheese fruits handicrafts uh, ethnic products ethnic cloth fishes these are the uh, products we can uh, first uh, come to think of uh, in transboundary trading through the using the transboundary rivers and we should find out the more products which can have more potentiality in the transboundary rate benefiting the gas level community and the thirdly is the infrastructure and the process should be more accessible and more far like there are ports so which are not very stacked facilities to be available co uh, for community so that they can use and access that easily get their their permit for trade easily we should prepare a list of product to which the grassroots traders can be acknowledged in transboundary trade the list should be ba on basis of the priority and the needs of the community from the port side and there are also we need quarantine facilities uh, because uh, we are talking about the perishable product and we have to ensure the safety and the security to the product right uh, so also we have to uh, make the customs procedures easy and we have to we have uh, we need our facility to stock and maintain the products so thus the infrastructure and the process will be process will be community community inclusive so all we want is this the inclusion of community i mean a single woman trader from a village can use the facility and can get the benefit that can be available through the transport transboundary transport so my points are uh, in short that we should not we, we are not allowed to hamper the river we do not hamper the river also uh, allowing traditional boats in transboundary river transportation that will not uh, need any dredging and identifying the products which enables community to community transboundary business then customs ports quarantine facilities banking and all other facilities that is needed that should be there in the ports so that uh, the small traditional traders women traders from community can get support and also the uh, business chambers that exist in the both country they they also can support the community so uh, in short the main concern of prosa for transboundary transportation should be fair and inclusive to the community and also uh, not hampering the river not, not hampering the fisheries resource of, as well as the grassroots fisher for community because at the at the end we all want is to benefit the grassroots level marginalized farmer level community uh that's all for me dinati thank you so much thank you uh, thank you shanta uh, in your brief conversation you have enlisted a number of actionable points in fact um thanks to touching on the consumer angle of course uh, uh, this trade is going to benefit the consumers as the price of consumer good, goods will come down and um, also uh, the you know the importance of uh, a product diversity diversification rather than relying on just one commodity for trade uh, the very question on uh, dredging and its economics uh, it's a little bit debatable but you know 
uh, that's why we push the the idea of short haul trade, uh, wherein you know we can do the trade just within a short distance across the immediate borders, and that's why Dubri Chilmari and Sonamura, Dautkandi, and other such shorter stretches. Uh, wherein we may not require that much of investment and that would benefit the community uh, in a much, uh, much wider angle. Uh, thank you once again. Now uh, let's hear from uh, Ms. Sharmila Khanam, Deputy Director, Bangladesh Inland Water Trans Transport Authority. Um, she has joined us now. Uh, Ms. Sharmila, if you can uh, just, you know, uh, tell us about the role of BIWTA uh, in uh, this cross-border uh, trade through inland waterways. And uh, if you can likely touch upon the steps taken by BAWT, especially during the COVID time to sustain trade, um, it's, it's to be mentioned that when all the land borders were sealed to contain the, the spread of the global pandemic, uh, waterways and coastal shipping were the means by which you know, uh, both countries traded. Over to you, uh, Sharmila. Thank you, Vina. Very good morning. Sorry for late joining. Um, uh, my topic says the inclusion of voices of riparian communities in transboundary rivers. So, honorable participants, good morning. It's my pleasure to join the webinar of uh, inclusion of voice of riparian communities in transboundary rivers at World Water Week 2021, which is jointly organized by CURN and, in, uh, and Oxfam. In this auspicious occasion, I would like to mention that a common history, culture, and heritage have bonded the people of Bangladesh and India together and is stronger. I remember with deep, deep gratitude to the support and sincerity extended by the government of people of sub regional country to our historical liberation war in 1971. The waterways in one of the most important mode of transport in a river and country, Bangladesh. It is a great gift for nature. The rivers of Bangladesh are linked with the regional connectivity like India, Nepal, Bhutan, and Myanmar. So the geographical location of Bangladesh for inland water waste transportation has got a unique strategic advantage. Our out of 50 rivers now exist in Bangladesh. 53 are originated from India by sharing the common water, both Bangladesh and India could be benefited in economical, commercial, and environmental purpose. It is well known that waterways are the cheapest mode of transportation than the other modes as because goods can be carried at a time in a large quantity. It is presumed that there may use a scope for trade promotion in this region by establishing transport connectivity in maritime and inland waterways of multimodal system. Bangladesh Inland Water Transport Authority BIWTA is responsible for control, development, and maintenance by inland waterways and inland ports of our country. We have three maritime seaports, that is Chitong, Mongla, and Paira, which are connected by inland waterways with 32 inland river ports located in different districts in Bangladesh. Due to unique geographical location, Bangladesh has the natural advantage to provide transport connectivity to the neighboring landlocked region of Northeast India, Nepal, Bhutan, and landlocked area of China. 
India is connected by inland waterways with Bangladesh, utilizing the rivers of both the countries. There exists a protocol on inland water transit and trade, that is PIWTT, from 1972. This protocol is characterized by two aspects, that is intercountry trade and trans transit trade. The arrangement has both been continuing with the interruption since 1972. Both the countries have agreed 10 routes so far. The main corridor are intercountry trade routes, that is Kolkata, Naranganj, Kolkata Mangla. Mangla. This was, these are the intercountry trade and other, uh, other is transit route, that is Kolkata Pandu, Kolkata Karimganj. Last year in 19, uh, 2002, uh, the protocol has made a second addendum. In that addendum, two new routes, that is uh, Aricha, Ratshahi, uh, Godagari, Maya to Dhulian and Daud Kandi to Shonamura route is included. And uh, previous, the port of call was uh, only six each in both countries, but nowadays this is 11. Currently, currently, the scope of protocol was further extended with the inclusion of the provision of transshipment at Ashuganj, which provides multimodal transport services. This will enable the Northeast India North, uh, landlocked status to have a cost and time efficient transport link with mainland India through the territory of Bangladesh. During the last 10 years, traffic under PIWTT has registered a tremendous growth in terms of intercountry trade goods. In fiscal year 2021, this figure was all time high to the tune of more than 3.65 million tons. Nowadays, Transit traffic has also gradually increased. It is expected that with the development of port infrastructure and facility at Ashuganj, the figure of transit traffic will even larger than that of intercountry trade. Even with tremendous traffic growth of intercountry trade goods, the present trend doesn't show any bright or assured further because of the total goods of intercountry trade only one category, that is pliage, which is 90% of total goods. Establishment of a good number of thermal power plants in Bangladesh, import of pliage from India will gradually decline. With respect to Nepal and Bhutan, these countries do not have common borders with Bangladesh and on the other hand, very close to Bangladesh, these are in Indian exist in between, India exists in between. And our understanding has been achieved among Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan and India for transport connectivity in 2015. Fully, this understanding will go further to establish a physical connectivity. Since July 2019, the intercountry goods are being transported by Bangladesh shallow drop vessel through Chilmari, Dhubri, Jogigopa, Chilmari, Bahadurabad of protocol route number one and two. Till now, 4,700 metric ton intercountry goods, that is stone, 
has been carried by 40 vessels. Alongside, 105 metric ton stone was transported by an Indian cargo. All these stones are generated from Bhutan. But for the landlocked region of China, no understanding nor any arrangement have been agreed as yet. Modal option for regional connectivity will go in favor of IWT because road and rail in Bangladesh have certain limitation to accommodate more traffic. On the country, uh, I, uh, I, a country IWT have got immense potential and underutilized further IWT would be cost and time effective and environmentally friendly as well. An efficient multimodal transport connectivity in, in terms of, and cost, of cost and time will bring about a development in a, the livelihood of millions of people in the sub-region Trade and commerce in the countries will expand port related industri industrialization and income will increase. Substantial employment opportunity will be created. Regional cooperation will be reflected in joint initiatives to save at the rivers from deteriorating condition. You know, in pandemic situation, all the trade was stopped. But under PIWTT, through waterways, trade is going on. Uh, uh, we, uh, last year, uh, our uh, you know, inter-country trade is increased. And uh, you know, there have a uh, passenger uh, cruise, ser uh, cruise service that have uh, through between Bangladesh and India. It started 29 March 2019, and three number of uh, Indian vessel and one Bangladeshi vessel was um, um, complete their voyage. The uh, vessel is uh, run through. Kolkata to Dubri. So we started a new route that is Daudkandi to Shonamura. In the uh, in the route, mainly cement is transported. There are some navigational problem and also some low height place. Uh, for that, uh, we will decide only shallow drop vessel can transport through nine and 10 number protocol that is Daukandi to Shonamura. We expect uh, uh, very soon our Aricha, Ratshahi and Godadari route. Lot of uh, companies are interested to carry stones, and uh, some other uh, items through uh, five and uh, that. To achieve the goal, dialogue of different tra uh, tracks should immediately be introduced, consisting of primary stakeholders, civil society, organization, and public authorities. That is all. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, Sharmila, for sharing the, the recent developments in Indian water transport sector between India and Bangladesh. I just wanted to ask you one thing, like uh, we all know that more than 90%, 95% of the vessels that is you know, being deployed in the protocol route are uh, Bangladeshi vessels. And as you said, 97% of the commodity which is traded is fly ash. Uh, so, have you ever been approached by any trader in Bangladesh who is willing to uh, export to India? Like the Sonamura Daudkanti case, it is clear, like that was the first ever Bangladeshi export 
to uh, you know India via, via waterways where cement was exported. Um, so, is there any other commodity, uh, any other trader, uh, you know, uh, who, who are interested in trading other commodities with India? You're muted, Sharmila. You're muted. Thank you. Uh, you know, um, uh, one of our big company, Pran, Pran. They um, um, export food items in Bangla, uh, in India. Last March 2021, one consignment was uh, uh, completed to Kolkata. There was some food items, lychee drinks. It okay. was a trial basis. Mm -hmm. huh. uh, so we expect uh, it will be regular. And they have a lot of interest. And okay. uh, some um, um, nowadays, uh, big volume of rice is uh, uh, import from India. Okay. Wheat, maize, sponge iron, clinker mm -hmm. also. And uh, stone is the uh, yeah. in big volume too. It is. Uh, from uh, Pakur or Bhutan. When we open the route number five and six, I think it is a uh, big, big uh, achievement for protocol, PIWTT. There have, a, uh, um, I, can, I can share, uh, the operator is interested to uh, carry coal, fly ash, rice, rice bran oil, limestone, Missionaries, hardware, china clay, um, maize, okay. soybean, okay. Thank you. meal. Thank you, Sharla. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have one more speaker uh, here. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing the fact that lychee drinks are being transported, which is another commodity, uh, which we can hope that which may, you know, um, Turned to be another <laughs> commodity which has been traded other than uh, flash. Uh, we have uh, 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 talking about stone trade via Dubri. We have uh, Mr. Atova Rahman from Dubri. He is president of Dubri Waterways International Traders Association. And he is a person who has been associated with, uh, you know, uh, trading boulders uh, from, from Bhutan to Bangladesh via waterways. Uh, so may I request uh, Rahman Bai to uh, speak? Um, so he'll speak in Hindi and uh, we'll be translating uh, his conversation. Raman Bhai, aapse pehla mera sawaad ye hai. I'm just asking him to, uh, you know, uh, share how the op operationalization of Dubri Chilmari route has benefited the stone trade. Aap hume ye bata sakte hai, Dubri Chilmari uh, waterway se jab shiru hua tha, tab aapko kis tarah se uh, fayda hua tha? Aap uske baare mein bataayenge? Yeah, madam, very big consolation, consolation, congratulation to you that arranging both of country worldwide meeting. The first time we have arranged the state of 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 the state फिलहाल अभी थोड़ा सा सहूलत मिला है बांग्लादेश से हम लोग जैसे भी बोट अभी बांग्लादेश बीएडब्ल्यूटी से जो परमिटेड बोट हम लोग का रेस्टार्ट बोट हम लोग ला रहे हैं अभी गोइंग टू बिग फोलियम नाउ टुडे टुडे टिल नाउ फोर बेसेल्स आर आउटवर्ड from Dubri. हम लोग इतना तक आ गया है तो फिलहाल शुरुआत में हम लोग बहुत दिक्कत हुआ था अभी थोड़ा फायदा का लाइन में हो रहा है जो जो वाटर वेस का मतलब सबका सहयोग बांग्लादेश वट बीएडब्ल्यूटी का मेडम भी इधर है मेडम और साइफुल भाई भी थे 
और हम लोग का जो आई डब्ल्यू डी डायरेक्टर मिस्टर सुरेंद्र सिंह और आप भी साथ में थे हम लोग हाँ शुरुआत में आप हमें आप हमें एक चीज बता सकते हैं रहमान हेलो आप हमें एक चीज बता सकते हैं कि पहले आपको कितना टाइम लगता था हेलो हाँ 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 पहले आपको कितना टाइम लगता था हमारा धुबरी में हम लोग का एक बोट सेवन डेज में सेवन एट डेज में हम लोग इधर से रिटर्न कर सकता है लोड आफ्टर लोड तो फिलहाल अभी अच्छा से मतलब अभी कोई मतलब प्रोडक्ट का हम लोग सोच रहे है उधर से कोई छोटा मतलब फार्मर्स का बांग्लादेश फार्मर्स का झूठ वगैरह हो हम लोग का इधर से वो बेम्बू वगैरह हो एक्सपोर्ट करे छोटा बेटल्स का रिक्वायरमेंट करने के लिए हम लोग बिनती डिपार्टमेंट को कर रहा है जे हम लोग लोकल जो आदमी है वो अच्छी तरह से बांग्लादेश और इंडिया से जुड़ सके तो लोकल लोकल आदमी है लोकल आदमी है छोटा बोट शेल ऑर्डर आपका छोटा बोट से हम लोग कर सके इसी का ट्राई हम लोग कर रहा है जे इधर का जो हम लोग का धुबरी इलाका इंडिया साइड का जो माने छोटा आदमी है छोटा बेसल्स है ये सब लेके हम लोग आग भरने से इंडिया बहुत फायदा एक हो जाएगा अभी प्लाइस तो कोलकाता से आ रहा है जा रहा है बांग्लादेश सीमेंट बांग्लादेश से आ रहा है और फिलहाल अभी तक आ, ये छोटा ना छोटा नाव वाली बात आपने अभी तक किसी अधिकारी के सामने रखा है आपके एसोसिएशन के दौरान कहीं आपने बात रखा है अभी हाँ 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 डायरेक्टर साहब को एक बार बोला था जो हम लोग का छोटा बेसल इंडिया का छोटा बेसल का परमिट रे स्टार्ट करें अभी फिलहाल परसों हमारे हम लोग का शिपिंग मिनिस्टर सरवन सर से भी हम हमको मुलाकात होने वाला है गुवाहाटी में हम ये बात अच्छी तरह से रखेंगे हम लोग का आसाम का आसाम का छोटा बोर्ड का वो रजिस्ट्रेशन दे दे ये दे दे क्योंकि वो इंटरनेशनली मूव मूव कर सके हम लोग इतना अच्छा अच्छा से ये बॉर्डर इन हम बोल सके जो ये जो इंडिया का बॉर्डर बहुत बॉर्डर है बहुत ट्रेड सेंटर है तो अभी हम लोग का कोशिश से आज जो यूपा मल्टी मॉडल बन बनने के लिए जा रहा है इतना बड़ा जेटी बनने जा रहा है जो हमारा प्राइम मिनिस्टर से गिफ्ट मिला है जोगी गोपा बहुत बड़ा इंटरनेशनल मल्टी है हम लोग इसके लिए काफी मेहनत किए है फिलहाल हम लोग को जो गिफ्ट हमारा नजदीक गिफ्ट दिया है जो बड़ा काम भी होगा उससे छोटा जो लोकल आदमी का जो है वो बेम्बू हो जो गन्ना बोलता है गन्ना उशिया हाँ वो 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 हो और हम अभी तो इस इस बार रोमपुर से आम 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 बांग्लादेश का वो हरी भंगा आम वो आने के लिए हम तैयार हुआ था तो फिलहाल हम लोग का लोकल जो आदमी है ये छोटा बोट के लिए हम बांग्लादेश से भी जो हम लोग का मोटा मोटी दो ढाई सौ टन तीन सौ टन का बोट आ ही रहा है हम अभी डायरेक्टर की सर को भी बोला था जो जो हम लोग का छोटा बोट का रजिस्ट्रेशन दे दे हम छोटा मोटा आदमी लोग लेके इधर का जो नजदीक नाइबरिंग एरिया का आदमी है ये लोग को लेके ये ट्रेड में हम पूरा इंजॉय कर सके हर आदमी इधर काम कर रहे हैं अभी कलकत्ता से बैठ के इधर काम भूटान से बैठ के थिम्पू में बैठ के बांग्लादेश से बैठ के इधर काम हो रहा है हम लोग इंडियन है इन हम लोग का हाथों से हाँ धन्यवाद धन्यवाद रहमान भाई हाँ 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 सॉरी आप आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही आप म्यूट म्यूट कर लिया 
हेलो 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 मैडम तो वो छब्बीस तारीख को परसों सर्वानंद सोनवाल हम लोग का भी वाटर वाइज मिनिस्टर हो गया हम लोग का एक अच्छा मैसेज है हम उसको मीट कर रहा है हम वो गुवाहाटी में जो हम लोग का ये जरूर ये छोटा मोटा आदमी का बात रखे हम लोग तो बहुत छोटा आदमी है हम लोग का बात रखे आप लोग कार्ड्स इंटरनेशनल से भी इसको जोहर अच्छी तरह से ठीक है धन्यवाद रहमान भाई तो मैं आई आस्क माय माय कलीग सौरभ टू ट्रांसलेट वॉट एवर रहमान भाई आई शेयर नाउ सौरभ थैंक यू वीना जी मिस्टर अतो रहमान एक्सप्रेस हिज प्लेजर ऑन ऑन स्टार्टिंग ऑफ trade and navigation through waterways between india and bangladesh he thank cuts international as well as bangladesh inland water transport authority indian water waterway uh, indian waterway authorities uh, to start this kind of uh, initiative he said that earlier it was very difficult to trade and to do navigation on these uh, on these roads but now uh, they uh, they are not facing many problems Bangladesh and BIWTA are also allowing allowing boats to get registered so that they can ply on these uh, routes. They uh, he said that there are around four vessels who have completed their journey on this these routes. Uh, traders as well local producers have also started to get benefits. Earlier, Dhubri, there were there were a lot of issues related to dredging in Dhubri as well as and in, in nearby areas. But now, government is working to solve this issue. Also, he said that earlier one boat used to take uh, seven around seven days to get loading and loading. But now it takes only three four times, including loading and loading paperwork, documentation and all. Small vessels and uh, he further said that. Uh, there is a requirement uh, uh, of cargo of small uh, uh, on small vessels particularly uh, uh, with related to, to the products that are locally produced or produced in the local vicinity like uh, bamboo mangoes and other agricultural products these products if transported to, to neighboring country Uh, will definitely benefit local people local producer and traders right now fly ash is going from kolkata but th these are big consignment and if local community uh, are targeted uh, to get benefited then transportation of of locally produced goods on 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 these sh shorter stretches should be there he also suggested that they are requesting various indian and bangladeshi officials in different Ministries and department to start the movement of small vessels on on this these routes. Uh, soon they will be meeting the shipping minister and they will raise this demand there also. He further said that Jogi Gopa, uh, the Indian government is developing a multi-modal terminal in Jogi Jogi Gopa, which will also enhance the possibility of transportation as well as inter uh, intra. Uh, Inter-country transportation, transit trade between Bhutan, Bangladesh, India. uh the the current chief minister of, of assam has also expressed his desire to further develop the inland waterway navigation in assam and they hope that uh this will definitely get uh, more momentum in the coming years thank you vinay ji thank you uh, saurabh for nicely capturing um, the gist of uh, what raman bhai has shared um we will take a look at the questions i have one question here from mr ramesh vaidya uh, wooden river bed mining in bhutan and nepal and transporting stones to bangladesh seriously hurt river systems and increase the intensity of monsoon floods in bihar and bangladesh uh, now this is a very critical question uh, because you know unregulated mining has always uh, impacted a, a environment adversely uh, from what i understand is that bhutan uh, uh, this boulders from bhutan are not just from you know river bed mining there are other open sources as well uh, but the the demand from bangladesh for boulder is 
huge for the construction sector. And that's why if you look at the commodity that has been uh, traded between say Bhutan, uh, Bangladesh, or even India, Bangladesh, if you remember the uh, point shared by Ms. Sharmila, uh, Pakur stone is one of the you know, hot commodity that is in demand in, in Bangladesh, which after the operationalization of uh, route five and six, uh, Rajshahi, Godagari, uh, Moya route, uh, then that movement will be there. So it's actually a demand driven um, trade that is happening. Um, as I said earlier, depending on one commodity uh, for the trade is not a sustainable option and uh, sustainable, unsustainable mining practices is also uh, uh, not uh, uh, recommended. Um, yeah, I hope I kind of address the question. Uh, there are no further questions. Um, anybody would like to raise question can uh, post a question in the chat box. Uh, if not, uh, we have just five minutes left and I'll, I'll just kind of conclude the session. Okay. So um, we have a very wonderful. Uh, Veena ji, uh, Veena ji, uh, there is a there is a question uh, by uh, Shripa Dharma Dikari. He asked when Mr. Rahman talked about giving registration to small boards. What is the size he is talking about? Twenty ton, fifty ton, or hundred? Okay. Uh, Rahman bhai, आपके लिए एक सवाल है कि आप जब बात करेंगे मंत्री जी से तो आप कितने टन के वेसल का रजिस्ट्रेशन की बात कहेंगे आप छोटे ना आपकी रजिस्ट्रेशन की बात आप कह रहे थे ना तो उसमें आपका साइज दस टन का होगा बीस टन का होगा या पचास टन का होगा तो आप लोग बात करेंगे तो आपकी वेसल साइज कितने टन का होगा आपने कुछ ऐसे मन में सोचा है इसके बारे में आप म्यूट म्यूट किया हुआ है अनम्यूट कर लीजिए प्लीज ओके 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 मैडम 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 हेलो हाँ जी हेलो हेलो हाँ हाँ हम तो सो, सोचा है कि छोटा जो हम लोग का इधर है फिफ्टी टन से हंड्रेड हंड्रेड टन फिफ्टी टन से हंड्रेड टन इसके लिए हम जरूर कोशिश करेगा फिफ्टी टू हंड्रेड टन हाँ फिफ्टी टू हंड्रेड टन ये बड़ा बोट होने से तो बहुत कॉस्ट आएगा बनने में ये लोग इतना बड़ा बोट नहीं बना सकता है तो ऐसा हो कि एक फैमिली में दो फैमिली जोड़ के एक बोट बना सके ओके तो फिफ्टी टू हंड्रेड टन के बोट आपके वहां पर अवेलेबल है अवेलेबल है अवेलेबल है अवेलेबल ओके धन्यवाद एनी अदर क्वेश्चन all right so um we had a very wonderful discussion starting from the ecosystem perspective of what um archana ji uh, spoke about to the you know, nuances of um, uh, mining and other issues um, highlighted by the other speakers like uh, you know shanta and uh, rahman bhai um, we have also come up with a few uh, suggestions that came out of this uh, today's webinar Uh, one is the relevance of track three engaging the communities and civil society organization for any uh, you know discussions on uh, transboundary uh, cooperation on uh, waterways or rivers in general and the other is uh, you know identifying the key commodities uh, that can be traded or even advocating to prepare a list of commodities that can be traded when we insist to include agriculture products there has to be uh, supporting infrastructure at the ports say quarantine uh, facilities and other you know testing facilities and all uh, so there has to be a regulation from the customs department on the commodities that has to be traded to ensure sustainable uh, um, navigation uh, again uh, you know working of departments in silos that won't help as highlighted by um, ashna ji where you know there are so many intersections of fisheries and um, there are instances where uh, uh, you know fishing gears are being damaged by the movement of vessels uh, even uh, the cage fish farming have conflicts with uh, cage fish farming that is practiced in bangladesh has conflicts with uh, the inland navigation sector uh, and uh, the dredging uh, maintaining the river south asian rivers are known for the high rate of sedimentation and resorting to dredging to keep this uh, waterways navigable is a big big challenge for the the nations involved 
um, and the inclusion uh, aspect as highlighted by Raman Bhai. It's good to know that, uh, you know, his uh, organization, his um, association will be taking forward the issue of uh, small boards to the minister uh, with whom he will be meeting uh, in a couple of days. Um, on behalf of Cuts and Oxfam, I thank you all the speakers and uh, all the participants who have attended this webinar. Uh, we hope um, we have come up with some uh, suggestions that can be taken forward uh, in our future work. Thank you for your active participation. Thank you, Vinadi. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Vinadi. Thanks a lot, everyone, all the partners here. Namaste, Raman. Bye. Thank you for coming. Thank you.